Welcome to the City Engine Essential Skills Tutorial. In this very first part we're going to learn how you can create a new first project. Let's go to File, New and then City Engine Project. Let's enter a first name so we'll call this My First City. And now you see that an empty a uh, project is going to be linked and created inside City Engine. There's nothing inside yet, so let's assume uh, this were your, um, or if you already have some assets and some rules you would like to reuse in your project. So you can go in and just simply select them and copy paste them with Control C or on Mac OS um, uh, Command C and paste them with Control V or Apple V. And the same with the rules here. Okay, so let, let's go in and now create a new scene. I'm going to right mouse click on the scene folder here, then go scene, new city engine scene. And I'm going to uh, name this my first scene. Okay not going to save it the new scene is going to be opened and this is our first scene as the second part of this tutorial we're going to create some first streets so we are going to use the grow streets algorithm and create our first street layout go to the graph menu and then to grow streets there's a lot of different settings to create different patterns and uh, street layout looks basically. So I'm not going into the details here. I'm just going to hit apply and generate uh, some streets with the basic default uh, settings. So to visualize all the data which is visible in the scene, I'm going to click on this button here. You can also press the F key on the keyboard to frame the selection. Now in the scene editor down here you see that a new layer has been created which can, contains all the elements which have just been generated within the street network layer. In the third part of the tutorial we are talking a little bit about navigation and selection. First thing to do is usually to decide the navigation scheme. You can do this if you go to edit, preferences, and then wait for the window to pop up and then under the mouse menu choose the default navigation scheme or one of the other navigation schemes available. If you have a 3D mouse by the company called 3D Connection you can also use this device for the navigation in your 3D scenes. So let's talk quickly about the main functionalities of the City Engine navigation. If you are pressing the Alt key on Windows or Option key on macOS and the left mouse button then you can tumble the view. If you are pressing the Alt key and the middle mouse button you can pan the view and the same with the right mouse button you can zoom in or zoom out. You can do the same also by scrolling the mouse wheel. Another important aspect of selection is um, also framing objects. For this you can press the F key on, on the keyboard or just simply click this button here in the toolbar. This is usually very fast if, you're, if you want to go far, but zoom in very precisely. Okay. About selection. Selecting obje objects can usually be very tricky if you have multiple layers in your scene and many of the uh, object lay or object types are visible. So using for example the F9, F10, F11 and F12 keys can be very um, s can be simplifying your task of doing selections. So for example in this case I could hide all the shapes or hide all the graph segments and just reactivate the shapes and so on and so on. Additionally on the layers you have this little eye symbol to visualize the whole layer or hide it. 
Now selection selections can be done differently. So you can, for example, simply select by left mouse button clicking on individual objects or you can draw selection rectangles. On the one hand side you can draw a rectangle, a selection rectangle from right to left which selects all the objects which are touched or inside the selection rectangle. You also see that it is drawn with a dashed line. On the other hand if you are drawing the the selection rectangle from left to right, only the elements which are residing completely within the selection rectangle, which is by the way now drawn with a solid line, are selected. And that way you can um, do different types of selections. So for example if I wanted just to select this point here or this street node, instead of selecting it with a single click, which can sometimes be tricky, I can just select it with a left to right selection. You can also add to selections or subtract to selection or from selections and so on and so on. For this in the menu here, in the selection menu, you see the different options which you have and you can toggle them with the control and the shift key. Depending on what you press, the, um, the, the little icon of the mouse cursor changes and you can, for example, add or subtract from the selection. Now the selection context menu gives you additional options. So for example, if I have selected this shape here, then I can go to select, select in the same layer or in the same map layer of the same type so all the shapes would get selected all in the same group and so on and so on. So I'm going to select in the same group here and you see that the whole block gets selected. In the fourth part of the tutorial we are talking about the generation of models with rules. So how does City Engine actually produce 3D models as this one in the scene here? Since City Engine is a so-called procedural modeling application, it uses procedures, so basically rules. A rule-based description how to create a 3D model. And for this for, this, for the creation of this 3D model, so let me quickly hide it, it needs two things. The input geometry plus the rule file which was just uh, mentioned. So let's go ahead and assign the same rule to all of these, um, all of these shapes in, within this block. So let me select the shape, select in the same group and now assign the rule file by dragging and dropping the building.cga rule on top of the shapes. And this also automatically triggers the generation of all the shapes. There are many different ways how to assign rules. So for example, uh, you can use the assign button here or let me show this a little bit better here. When right mouse clicking onto a layer if you wanted to assign one rule to a full layer and go here to assign rule file. Now we can also go in and obviously delete some of these models again so let me go in and delete this model with the right mouse button context menu and then go in select the shape again you see that the rule is still assigned and press the generate button up here or with the Control G um, combi key combination on the keyboard or Apple G on Mac OS. City Engine also can create many many variations of randomized objects. So in this case for example we have the seed value which you can use to create many many different versions. Another shortcut here is to use the, uh, the update seed button up here which does basically the same thing or you can use the shortcut again on the keyboard C 
Control Shift G or Apple Shift G on Mac OS. Now rules can or rules usually work with attributes and as we see in this specific example here for example the height of this building is defined by a rule value which is randomized. We will see that just in a minute. So I can go in and actually override this height value with a user set value. So I can go in and put in any number basically. And that is procedural modeling. In this fifth part of the tutorial we're talking a little a little bit about rule editing and we're going to explore the rule which was used in this example scene. So let's select the building here and click on the rule link here which automatically opens the rule editor within City Engine. You can do the same also by opening the rule by double clicking here. So let's make this a little bit big, bigger and you see some text here. By the way there are some buttons up here with which you can choose whether you want to visualize your rules either as a text style or as the purely visual CGA representation which is uh, somewhat node based. So let's stay in here and explore a little bit what's written in here or what's defined in here. So as we see here and we have edit this, edited this just before there is a height attribute which is currently at about 40 meters so let's see what this does so lot this is the start rule which you see here start rule lot and this is the starting point which takes the input geometry the, uh, the underlying building footprint now um, there is just a little case to, to distinct whether it's a lot inner or a lot, so I'm not going to talk about this. The most important thing is the extrude here. Extrude, what it does is it takes the input footprint and makes basically a box out of it. So by extruding to the full volume, you see the icon here which is pretty clear what it does. And this takes an input. It this takes a value or um, a float value or an, a number basically and in this case this is an attribute called height and we find that on the left hand side here so if we are going in here a little bit and by the way uh, the navigation is the same as in the 3d viewport it's just all 2d in here but you can zoom in and pan so the attribute height is a random value between 15 and 25. So I can, co I can go in and uh, edit these values. So I can say the random value should be in between 35 and 45. Enter, save the rule file with Control S or um, Command S on Mac OS and then I'm using the connection editor here, this little icon which opens the connection editor and I'm going to go back to the rule defined value instead of the user overridden value which I have set here. So I'm just double clicking this line here and now you see the new value which was chosen is 37.9 which is actually indeed a value between 35 and 45. Okay. So let's continue here. Let's go in and add a roof to this building. You see that if you're maximizing the view here with the space bar, there is a flat roof here. So let's add a roof in here. The first thing I'm doing is I'm right clicking here into the gray canvas and I'm adding a rule. And I'm going to name this guy my rule or let's add my roof. It's maybe it's better. Okay. Now here we see that the component split which we have here splits off all the side polygons or the side shapes and gives them or passes them on to the facade rule which is going up here and the top shape here 
this is, um, this is the place where we want to have our roof. So I'm going to connect this shape here by clicking here and dragging the line over here and letting go. Now you see that the connection has been made, so my roof is now triggered here and it continues within the rule here. Now let's add a new operation here. So let me click right in this spot here. Right click, add rule, no, add operation, roof, and let's say roof uh, hip, for example, with a default value of 22 degrees. So I'm going to save the rule here and going to um, maximize the screen here and regenerate this model here. And now you see that a roof has been generated with an angle of 22 degrees, 22 and a half degrees. And if I'm generating all of the models at the same time, so I'm selecting this model and this model and this model. Actually, let me select all in the same group and regenerate. Now you see that all of the buildings change the height and have a roof now. Now I could go in and say, okay, this 22 degrees here, that's a little bit boring to have it all the same. So let me go in and create another attribute and name this guy uh, something like, for example, my angle. So the system takes a little bit long here, but nevertheless, my angle, let's say uh, 40 as the default. Okay and go in here, set float function, user attribute, um, my angle, enter, save the rule file, and make this a little bit smaller here, and go in. And now since we have a new attribute defined, this attribute now also appears in the inspector, so I can go in, and play with this new value. So my angle can now be anything user set. I could also go in and define this as a random value again and play with other inputs for this. So this was the conclusion for this first essential skills tutorials. I hope you liked it and uh, please continue with the next tutorial.